This is Breakfast with James Valentine on ABC Radio Sydney. Well, look, unfortunately, just because of the runway configurations at Sydney, uh, when the wind is no longer prevailing the uh, the north-south uh, runways, which we have two of, and it goes east-west, uh, we only have one runway. So, unfortunately, what happens at, at that time is operations end up vastly impacted. Uh, it reduces the number of flights and frequencies in order to maintain safety for operations. So, unfortunately, for the travelling public, it's just going to cause delays. Yeah. Now, and that some situation of the things... has been pretty much, uh, you know, that that's been the norm. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm, I know that I'm speaking out of ignorance here, but I'm sort of repeating things I've heard or pe- things people say. So, I'm not just saying this as a critique as such. Is Sydney Airport a bit overcautious about this? Does it go to that? Does it close the runway a bit early? No, not really. I mean, Australia has a long uh, and proud safety record of aviation, and so precautions are taken during those weather events uh, to ensure that operations uh, continue uh, and in a manner that is safe for the travelling public. So, uh, unfortunately, it just means whenever that uh, wind condition uh, shifts, uh, the cross runway is going to come into effect and operations will slow down. But to be perfectly honest, James, there's a there's a bigger storm brewing in aviation right now, and that's not the uh, the impact on the cross runway. That's the shortage of pilots and the shortage of engineers, which in the next uh, three to five years, if we don't solve, we're going to have much bigger impacts on commercial aviation nationwide. Yeah, right. So this seems to be, this is also then chiming into this sense of what what I struggled to get my head around a little. Before COVID, you know, you flew up and down to Sydney to, to Melbourne in a day. I went to Brisbane and came back in a day because the, the, you could rely on the flights. You could rely that it's going to happen. Now it just doesn't seem to happen, even if we have wind or not, it seems to be difficult to get to get on. Absolutely. COVID has had an absolutely devastating impact on aviation and uh, on the number of air crews, the number of engineers, ground support staff and essential key personnel. Uh, Post-COVID, the numbers just haven't returned to where they were previously and that's having a huge impact on the aviation ecosystem. Uh, But worse still, uh, the impacts were greatly felt by the smaller general aviation industry nationwide, which is this is where the breeding ground of all the pilots, this is where we train our pilots, we train our engineers, and there is a national crisis taking place. We are so short on engineers in this country right now uh, that in, unless we start solving this problem, we are looking at a future where uh, airlines and smaller operators will struggle to continue to put aircraft in the air. And a lot of this is being driven um, and and made worse by a deepening and worsening regulatory situation in aviation, but also magnified by a deepening crisis with respect to privatised airports. And many of your listeners would be unaware, back in 1998, the federal government sold off all of our airports to privatised interests. And since then, the costs of aviation businesses being at airports have blown out by the thousands of percent to such a point that many aviation businesses now can't even afford to be based at an airport. So we've seen the collapse of flight training, the collapse of engineering training, the collapse of charter operations nationally. And all of this is now, as they say, the chickens are coming home to roost. All of it has now been accelerated by uh, COVID. And it's unlikely that we're going to be able to climb over this challenge unless there is some serious government intervention in this space. All right. So before, in the before times, You'd have engineering businesses that could afford to be at at Sydney or Brisbane, and then they're training up the staff. You had uh, training programs at at, uh, Bankstown or or Sydney and and, and the like. These things have been costed out of existence. What you've got is you've got airports were bought not by aviation organisations but by superannuation property uh, property funds, and those super funds have managed those airports and have, have. over the last 25 years, are slowly converting these airports into non-aviation uh, real estate parks and commercial precincts. And we only need to look at Moorabbin, Bankstown, Archerfield, uh, Jandicott in Western Australia, these major capital city locations where thousands of our pilots were trained and our engineers were trained. These locations uh, virtually don't even uh, look like airports anymore. And so unfortunately, the aviation businesses, which are essential to the ecosystem of aviation are disappearing because they just can't pay these extortionate rents that are being charged. And as I said, unless there is some kind of serious federal government intervention at these sites to stop the pillaging of the aviation industry, this is going to continue. And then the travelling public ultimately going to pay the price with huge disruptions across the national network. Yeah. So, and this is the the airports you're describing in Moorabbin or Bankstown, 
not as uh, not as obvious to most of the travelling public, right? Well, this is the point, James, is that these these locations are typically pretty invisible to the ordinary everyday Australian. And the reason being is uh, when you catch a flight, you don't catch a flight from those locations. You fly from Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane. Um, but the pilots that are sitting in the front of every airliner in this country, they have to start somewhere. They start in general aviation. They start at these secondary <coughs> capital city locations. And so unfortunately, with the collapse of flight training, with the collapse of engineering support and training, um, the, the system's almost been running on empty for the last five to six years. And COVID, unfortunately, was a real trigger moment. It accelerated the, the avalanche and it got out of control. And now what's going on is airlines are struggling to find air crews. Uh, we're now looking at airlines outsourcing more and more maintenance and offshoring that. This is not good for the future of the country. It's not good for our sovereign capability. It's not good for the future of young Australians who want to look to aviation for uh, those technical trades and skilled uh, jobs that pay well. Yeah. Hearing from Ben Morgan, he's Executive Director of Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association of Australia, giving a, a big surf to uh, the difficulties in aviation uh, in, in Australia at the moment. And some of what you're describing does feed into why I'm standing there and my flight's been cancelled at, at, at Sydney or Brisbane, right? If we don't, you're talking about problems that are looming for us, but those problems are here right now. What with privatised outsourcing of much of the staffing, what with a lack of staff still being there, it, whether that's air traffic control or the pilots, or I was waiting for a food cart to arrive the other day on, on a plane, seemed to be a problem. These are all the same kind of problem, right? Absolutely, James. I mean, we've, we've, we've witnessed nearly 30 years of a gutting of the aviation industry, a total undermining of our capability nationally. And you only look, you only need to look at the headlines. You can see this information for yourself. The, the major airlines are outsourcing everything. We've, um, fewer and fewer jobs are being retained here in Australia. This is having an impact on the ability for the airlines to keep these aircraft running consistently. I have never heard a period of time like I'm, I'm observing now where we're watching aircraft turning back engine failures in flight, aircraft serviceability failures. Uh, it's really starting, as I said on another program only a few days ago, we're starting to see the cracks in the system now publicly and it's really time for a major shake-up and a major wake-up call for not only the aviation industry but for the federal government to realise that the impacts of over-regulation, the impacts of over-complexity to regulation, the cost impost that that is generating on industry, the deep and worsening impacts of privatisation at airports and the fact that property prices have spiralled out of control to a point where your average aviation business just can't afford to be on an airport anymore. It's lunacy. Mm. Aviation businesses, flight like training schools, engineering um, uh, organisations can't relocate. They can't go and start up off an airport. They have to be at the airport. So they're trapped in these monopolies that are gouging and raping the industry and it's undermining our capability and this will impact national consumers. There is no question about it. The aviation ecosystem will become more fragile. It'll become more unstable and that's not what Australia needs. I think COVID highlighted how critical aviation is to the national economy. When the airlines stop, the country stops. We need to safeguard Australia's economy. We need to safeguard Australia's way of life by ensuring that the aviation industry has robust uh, frameworks and, and infrastructure control. So it's time now for the federal government to step up. We really need to see the Prime Minister intervening. Uh, this is the, the, the canary in the coal mine moment. If we don't do something soon, James, it's going to get much, much worse. This is Breakfast with James Valentine on ABC Radio Sydney.